Hey guys, today I'm going to show you a little bit about the basics of color theory, um, or at least as I've learned um, the basics over the years. I don't know much about the technicalities of color theory, but I do know enough to get myself started in pictures and make them look vibrant enough and eye-catching enough uh, to at least give you guys some help if you're unsure where to start with coloring. Um, I was always unsure where to start with coloring uh, when I was younger. I used to only draw in black and white graphite pictures. Um, but after I got a graphics tablet um, and started using programs like Infinite Painter and Photoshop and Paint Tool Sci, I got a little bit more comfortable with taking these color skills and using them on real canvas and paper and using real paint and pen and stuff like that. Um, but basically today I'm going to show you um, the basics in Infinite Painter on how I uh, take the concepts of color theory and utilize them in my drawings and sketches. Um, but basically my color wheel that I go off of is the typical pigment color wheel um, with red and then blue and then yellow as the main primary colors that you make every other color from. Um, so if you mix red and yellow you'll make orange and red and blue you'll make purple or violet, I think it's violet, and then uh, yellow and blue will make green. Now like I said these are pigment based uh, primary colors. If you were dealing with light primary colors, it would be uh, red, blue, and green, not yellow. Um, but typically when you're using pigments like paint and stuff like that, you would use red, yellow, and blue. So that's the one that I usually go off of. Um, you'll notice the one in Infinite Painter is different, um, but this is the one I'm going off of. So like I said, um, each primary color mixes to make the secondary colors. And uh, keep in mind the color mixings that I've done on Infinite Painter here aren't super duper accurate with regards to um, being the correct color shades, um, but it's just a quick demonstration for you guys. So like I said, here's the secondary colors. That's orange, violet, and green. Um, the green's probably a little bit too lime colored, but that's okay. Now, if you were to mix one of those secondary colors with a primary color, it would create what's called a tertiary color. Um, these are the ones that have two names. Um, I'm not going to show myself blending those just yet, but um, they would be like yellow green or red orange um, they're the dual named colors um, but you'll see if you draw an arrow completely across from each other on the color wheel that will be the complementary color of whatever shade you're drawing the arrow from um, this color is a very jarring contrasting color um, that complements the opposite color um, so like christmas colors are a good example, red and green. Um, they're complete opposite of each other, but they complement one another very well, even though it's very jarring. Um, and you can use it to create extreme contrast with just color rather than um, dark and light values. But like I said earlier, the Infinite Painter color wheel is a little bit different. Um, so it's based off of green, blue, red as the primary colors. And then the secondary colors are magenta, cyan, and yellow. So the complementary colors are going to be a little bit different on that color wheel. So you can mess around with those as well if you wanted to. But now I can show you um, a couple examples of how those colors would look on a drawing. So you can take red and green, like I said, and that'll end up looking like Christmas colors, but that's complimentary. Um, but it looks pretty interesting. And you can take any different color combination that you would ever think of, um, as long as it is the direct opposite. 
on the color wheel. And I encourage you to experiment uh, with doing that on your drawings because uh, it can add a lot of emphasis and pop onto certain areas that you'd like to draw attention to. Anyway, if you mix a secondary and a primary color, like I said before, you will create a tertiary color like this teal color here. Um, and then you can do a lot with those. You can do what are called analogous color combinations. If you do three colors that are directly next to each other on the color wheel, at least um, on the 12 part color wheel that I'm speaking of, including the primary and secondary and tertiary colors on there. Usually that's done to create a more monochromatic feel. Um, it's not monochromatic, obviously, but the colors will be similar to each other, and usually you can use it to blend in a direction. So here the green is a little bit lighter than that teal, so it leads your eye to that direction. And then also you can even add on another color in addition to those three, or even more than that, and just move up the color wheel, and that can create cool color combinations as well. So here I'm going to do the slightly different thing and take two primary colors and a secondary color. Um, so that's red and yellow as the primary colors and orange as the secondary color and throw those on this drawing and that creates an even more interesting color combination. Now I'm not exactly sure what you would call that color combination, but it's just an example of how you can play around with how the colors are arranged on the color wheel. And you can do that with Infinite Painter's own built-in color wheel and see what looks good. As long as when you blend the colors together it doesn't turn into a muddy brown, then you are probably leaning in the right direction. And of course, as long as it's pleasing to the eye, it is along the lines of what you wanna go for. Now, um, there's other ways to apply these concepts of analogous colors and complementary colors and um, in general color harmony. Um, you can also use it to color your shading or values um, instead of just relying on the easy to decipher black and white or black and gray and white like you see here you can use uh, red and yellow and orange like this and have that as the bright light source and then as it gets down further away from the brightest light source it gets cooler and more purple and then maybe it fades into blue and then has a lighter blue as a secondary light source and you can see here on this dragon painting i did i used analogous colors for the body um, and then i used a contrasting complementary color for the eye to draw your attention to it um, there's different ways to do things with color theory that uh, can help benefit you in any of your paintings or drawings. And also another thing to keep in mind is looking at references uh, from nature, from animals and plants and things like that with bright, vibrant colors or even dull colors. Um, look at the color combinations that you see in nature because um, nature, for some reason, tends to follow these color patterns as well. Um, and it's something that you can use as inspiration for your drawings. But anyway, guys, um, I'm really happy that you could stop by and check out another one of my videos. If you um, are interested in seeing more of my work, you can check out my social media. I am on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, uh, and I just made a Twitch account as well. Um, so if you're interested in checking out some live streams, I might be doing that soon. Uh, and also, if you liked this video and if it was helpful, 
please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're interested in more YouTube videos like this. And if you would be so kind, please do share my videos to all your family and friends. Any kind of exposure helps for me. Um, and I appreciate all of the new subscribers that have checked out my channel recently. Um, and please stick around. There's definitely going to be more. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.